recognize the Vance and Hines name from their years of dominance in NHRA, flat track, and bagger racing. But now they're looking to bring a new level of tuning to the off-road world thanks to their Power Pack ECU system. We're here at their global headquarters in Indiana, and we're going to take a look inside the shop to see what's going on. Oh, nice to meet you. Richard Gadsden, nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah. we got a lot of cool stuff we want to show you today. We want to peel back the curtain on our Power Pack ECU, connect some dots for you. I'm sure you have some questions, and uh, we're looking forward to showing you some cool stuff. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to take a look. Let's just do a shop tour, uh, show you a little bit about what we do here, and uh, start there. Cool. All right, let's go. So this is this area here is where we build our engines, uh, predominantly our pro stock engines uh, for our customers and, as well as our team. Um, what happens in this room has led to all of those wallies you see up there on the wall. Um, you've wow. got a combined 11 championships between the guys that have ridden on this team. You see this is a lot of their suits from Matt Hines, Andrew, Eddie. Um, this is a, a lot of memorabilia that comes from the performance that's uh, derived from this room that you see right yeah, here. That's cool. We have a really, really, really big team. Everybody has uh, a lot of different strengths uh, and we play to each other's strengths. Uh, you, you would be surprised as to how little we talk, but what the end result, what end result we arrive at from uh, from the people that are in this building. And you so, guys are uh, making this stuff in house. Yeah, all in house. Pretty much everything wow. you see here is in house. Uh, our cases, our crankshafts, our cylinders, our cylinder heads. Pretty much everything aside, uh, except for camshafts, which are our own grind, but we don't do them in house. This is uh, the machine shop, uh, if you will. This is where you have uh, um, our lathes, mills. Uh, manual machines uh we make a lot of uh, a lot of the trinkets that come on our motorcycles we don't buy much we anything that needs to be on our motorcycles controls we do a lot of that stuff here wow. um i mean you think of it you name it we pretty much do it all here i think maybe the only thing is we don't make are the wheels <laughs> that run on our bikes so uh we walk past some of our cnc machines but we have uh we got more to go this is scott this is his area we uh Build a lot of the crankshaft materials in this area here. Uh, cylinder head porting happens. And I think I heard yesterday, it's not all for the racing too. You guys do this for regular customers who can send their stuff in as well? Correct, that's what we race to showcase what we do. We do cylinder head porting for a lot of race teams all the way down from Supercross, flat track, drag racing, Wow, the whole deal. And that's, that goes for Harleys, inline fours, single cylinder dirt bikes. Uh, you. You think of it, we, we do it. We've even done some uh, car stuff. Yeah, so this is kind of our road race department, if you will. Um, Rocco Landers on the stock 1000, uh, wow. Matthew Chapin on the, our twin cut bike, and then of course our two baggers in the King of the Bagger program. Um, so this is what keeps a lot of us really busy throughout the year. So most, most everything we make in house, we try to never really go outside this building. Um, this motorcycle up here is actually a perfect example of that. We built that complete in-house frame, swing arm, all the engine modifications, wow. covers. Um, and we did win the production twin title in 2022 with that bike. But we currently still manufacture that bike. So any race team that's interested in going into the twins class, you can call up. We can build you one and you'll, you'll be... Right, the same thing that same, won the championship. That's, that's awesome. It. So this is where the power pack magic happened. We really, really, really went through a lot of testing. Every single motorcycle that we bring in here, we calibrate all of the sensors. And you know, these things, you can't find the information online on how right. to make these motorcycles work. We actually go through pretty much kind of like reverse engineering the motorcycle. No, not pretty much like, we do reverse engineer these motorcycles to find out how to make them run, how to make them happy, and how to make our product reliable. This is what the ECU first looks like when it comes off the CNC machine and anodizing. Um, once we get done making all of the parts and pieces that go inside of here, we pot this. Um, we spend a lot of time worrying about um, the outside elements getting in here. We want it to be waterproof. We want it to be, uh, we want to keep all dirt, water out of this, uh, out of steel. So we pot it when we're done. Um, the harnesses are, are done waterproof as well. Um, all the way from the on off switch down to the ECU, we, we try to make this as durable as we can. This whole concept came about through our different racing projects that we have, um, going through the flat track program and then going into the road race program. Um, 
dealing with the electronics in, in, in that environment, realizing that there was a need or a place in the motocross sector, the off-road sector. These are the components that basically make up our system. They're strictly derived from what we are currently using in our, in our bagger program right now. So take me through what the different parts of this are. This is a stick coil for the Yamaha. Every motorcycle's coil is a little bit different based on where they mount, how much room is underneath uh, the bike, the size of the borehole, the spark plug borehole. Uh, but this is the Yamaha's coil. It, it goes right on top of the uh, on top of the spark plug coil on plug, if you will. Um, this is our O2 sensor, Lambda sensor. Um, everybody calls it something different. This is the kit that goes directly in the exhaust. This is what gives the feedback to the ECU on what your air fuel ratios are. And uh, if you're using closed loop tuning, this is essential. You have to have this. Okay. Um, this is just a communications cable to plug in from your laptop to the ECU. Yep. Um, this is your on off switch. We use this rocker switch because we need to be able to power up the ECU to pull the data logs. You don't want to have your motorcycle sitting there running while you're pulling a data log yep. or you don't want it to shut off, et cetera, et cetera. So we use an on off switch to power up the ECU and obviously this is the ECU like mentioned before oops, sorry like mentioned before it's a full potted unit waterproof uh, durable as, as can be um, each ECU has its own serial number um, so that we can always track and if you call it back if you had any issues or you lost your map file or your yep. whatever we know exactly what went in here from day one and we could supply you with that information again so that's a full replacement for my ecu on the bike right now we'll take the ecu off and plug this in take your stock ecu off plug this in and you got a full standalone ecu in your motorcycle nice let's get it installed but before going through with the full power pack ECU install, we wanted to see what kind of power this stock CRF450R was making. So we headed over to the dyno room to check the numbers with the stock ECU setup. All right, Ryan, so you know we didn't change fuels. We didn't do anything. Start it up and run it, do the same deal, run it three times, see what it does, and uh, we'll look at the data. Three horsepower and 9,500 RPM, 35.7.8 or so foot pounds of torque at 6,800 RPM. And that's what your stock map is. So when you put an exhaust on this, that's no longer what that is anymore. If you put an air filter, if you put a piston or cam, you can't do anything about that. So it'll lean it out or richen it up depending on the engine's characteristics, and uh, you don't have any tunability there. So. Uh, that's, that's what we want to fix with power pack. Then we headed back to the workshop to get the power pack ECU installed. So we're going to start assembling the power pack. Um, we'll start just taking all the body work off. Basically just lay the subframe back. All you have to do is disconnect your uh, this hose to the air box and loosen up this screw here. And, uh, and then you can just lay it back. It just makes it easier to route the wires. Uh. So he took the stock ECU off. Yep. The power pack could go in its place. That's one of the beauties of power pack that we wanted to make sure was that this wasn't something that you had to figure out where to mount where to put it we carefully did the design of the box to go right inside the factory boots yep the only two things you have to remove are the stock ecu and you're going to remove the stock coil so you don't even have to take the spark plug out or anything just take the two bolts out yep unplug the coil and you run a much stronger ignition than uh than what the factory one is oh, okay Everything is labeled in your instructions. Like we'll have a key that basically says this is for your Lambda sensor. This is your power switch, et cetera, et cetera. So it won't be very, uh, it, you won't be, it won't be complicated at all. After getting the power pack ECU installed, it was time to learn exactly what this unit was capable of and how to control it. This map will already be in a box that you would receive. It'll generally show a slight increase in power. Okay. I think most people are going to feel like it's it's got a little more response to it okay. that you can do whatever you want. Steve and Richard did a great job explaining the function of the power pack and gave me a deep dive into the software required to operate it. There's already pre-built maps programmed into every power pack ECU along with an auto-tune feature which automatically optimizes the air to fuel ratios and fully adjustable tables for fueling, ignition, and Lambda if you want to completely customize your own map. You can build that map right in, right in your deal, whatever it is you're changing, the rev limiter, whatever. Yeah. The tuning window is probably where most people will do everything. Okay. 
The main functions here is your fuel table, your lambda control table, and your ignition table. And if there was nothing else that you used in this, in this system, those would be the three that you used. But the other part of that is you're going to get data that will show you like that it's running leaner. Like you're going to see all the things to make those decisions. You go to some corner and you, you know, you, you hammer the throttle and it's deep sand and you feel like, wow, it doesn't, it, it could probably be a little more aggressive. You could go pull that data set, figure out where you were at in that corner. You could see what your throttle position is. You could see what your timing values were. And you could say, well, I'm only 25 degrees of timing. I, I know I can bump it to 30. Since it provides data in real time, the power pack system really allows users to get inside the heart of their motorcycle and precisely tune their power character of the bike. Coupled with a dyno, it's, it's a powerhouse. Like it's a game changer on a dyno, you know, as far as, quick and easy you know most people have to you know they have to plug in the the you know the hose and you know do a pull and then it prints it well this thing's doing it live for you in its own data set to be quite honest i felt pretty overwhelmed at first but i was able to gain a better understanding of what exactly the ecu does and how the professionals tune it to get the most out of their bike after passing terry vance's pop quiz it was back to the dyno room to see the differences from our stock runs earlier in the day You can see the, the gains up top, a solid baseline 57.8 horsepower or so, but at its peak it makes a solid 5 more horsepower wow. with the pipe. That was because the ECU recognized that, hey, this exhaust flows a lot more air, the bike's a lot leaner. Yeah. It would have been a lot leaner. Had you not had this power pack, we would have ran it a lot leaner just now, right? Yeah, so that's that's a 4 horsepower, 3.5 to 4 oh, horsepower gonna, difference. Yeah. And two foot pounds of torque. You'd feel that. Yeah. Begin selection, end selection, auto-tune VE. Even when you buy other ECUs that people send flash services or whatever case may be, you still can't do anything about it. They're locking it as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Like if you if you like the way it feels everywhere, but a certain part of the racetrack you're in second and yep. you just can't get in the throttle in second. And one isn't enough and one is too much. And one is too much, mm -hmm. correct. You can make this table be second gear I need mm -hmm. to knock power out of it. You can you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of this. That's why it, it, this is for the user who doesn't want to do that much. They just want simplicity. Mm -hmm. Or it's for the guy whose mind won't rest at night and he's thought of 10 different things he wants to try tomorrow. He can do that. So... I feel like I finally understand how the ECU works and to really dive into the power pack was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming, Ryan. We were happy to have you, man. We were happy to get an opportunity to show you a little bit about the capabilities of the ECU, why we did it. Yeah, I'm excited to put it on the bike and get a really dialed setting. I feel like I'll spend a lot more time tuning than I will riding, but I'm excited to do it. What, uh, where can people find these if they want to check them out as well? They can give us a call. Um, I'll be happy to talk to you, um, or you can visit our website, advancedhindsmotorsports.com. Uh, they're on our website. There's a lot of videos. We have about five or six videos on there. Um, it's all on our website and our YouTube page. All right, big thanks to the Vance and Hines crew for having us out today. Learned a ton about the new Power Pack ECU system and overall just how the electronics of a motorcycle work. I learned a lot today, and I'm excited to put this thing to the test on my bike back home, get a good setting, and uh, put this thing really to the test out on the track. If you guys like what you see, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Check out our digital magazine at psychonews.com. Available for free every Monday night. Check out our website for more breaking news. And until next time, we'll see you guys out at the track.